So a couple of days ago I released a video comparing different AR glasses including the Xreal Air 2 Pro but others like the Vitcher and the Rokit Max. If you're interested in that comparison you can watch the video by clicking over here. One of the things you can purchase for the Xreals is this iPod looking thing called the Beam. Is this a good purchase? Well here's me sharing my thoughts on the Beam. Now what the Beam was essentially designed to do is to give you more options, more control over your glasses and essentially it allows you to do two things. The first one is control the screen size. So if you connect your glasses to your phone for example, you're gonna mirror that screen and that's all you can do. With the beam you can actually control the size of that screen but also the distance or the apparent distance from you. You can shrink it all the way down to 28 inches and go all the way up to about 320 inches and even more. But what's more the beam enables three different modes, which otherwise you would not have. The first mode is what's called three degrees of freedom, and this allows you to pin the screen in midair and keep it pinned fixed. So if you move your head left and right, the screen remains fixed. Now here a quick distinction between that three degrees of freedom and what VR goggles have, which is six degrees of freedom. The three degrees, what the beam allows you to do, lets you pin the screen, and the screen stays pinned if you simply move your head but you cannot physically move out of the space. Whereas with six degrees of freedom, the screen remains pinned. Even if you pick up and leave, the screen remains in whatever position you pinned it in, in that particular space. Now, prior to purchasing the beam, I thought I really want to have three degrees of freedom and the ability to pin the screen. However, in reality, um, it turned out to be far less useful than I thought. And that's because I had inaccurate expectations. So in my mind, I would pin the screen similar to how you would be sitting in front of a TV, for example. And then the fact that the screen is pinned would give me a similar experience to sitting in front of a TV, moving left and right, but the screen or the TV remains pinned and fixed there. In reality, it was not the same experience at all. And it's hard to explain that in words, but I'm gonna try. Um, when you are sitting in front of a TV and you move your head, you still see the TV and everything else in your peripheral vision. With the glasses, however, it's not quite the same. Because you have those micro OLED screens and you're literally looking into a projected image, if you move your head away, you don't see anything in your peripheral vision. Instead, there are black bars that, that simply just cut the screen out. So you no longer see the screen, yes, but you don't see everything else. You simply see black bars. And that beats the point why I felt I wanted three degrees of freedom and the ability to pin the screen. Another use case that I thought would be really helpful to have uh, three degrees of freedom is in an airplane, for example. And that's because without three degrees of freedom, whenever you wear the glasses and there's any motion, the screen is gonna jitter and just shake. And that's potentially gonna give you motion sickness if you're on an airplane and there's any turbulence. And I thought having three degrees of freedom, being able to pin the screen in space would eliminate that. But I was absolutely wrong and that's because while the screen does stay pinned, whenever there is any motion, those black bars that I talked about are going to be moving in and out of the frame and causing the same jittery motion sickness that you get if you did not have 3D user freedom. So my experience with the body anchor mode, that's the 3D user freedom, less useful than I thought it would be. What I did find extremely useful, however, was the second mode, which is smooth follow. And this one I did not expect to find useful. So without this mode, if you have your phone plugged in, wherever you move, the screen follows you almost instantaneously. With smooth follow enabled, it's a much smoother motion, which looks better, it's less jittery, but where it really shines is in cases where you are in a moving vehicle or in a plane, and it completely gets rid of that jitteriness that could cause you any motion sickness. I did test this on two different flights and uh, the difference is quite apparent when there's even the slightest turbulence without smooth follow. So if I have my phone plugged into the glasses directly, even the slightest turbulence is gonna shake that screen uh, intensively. And if you go through a lot of that in the flight, I can see how you might get motion sickness. With smooth follow, it can completely smoothen that over. And if you shrink the screen size just a little bit, so you're not at the maximum field of view of the monitors, 
you don't even feel anything. So you, your head can be moving and shaking, but the screen is completely fixed and not shaking at all. And that's because you've given the screen some allowance with those black bars because you've shrunk the size. It gives it a buffer. So um, you don't feel any turbulence that's transferred into a jittery screen. The third mode that you can get with the beam is called side view. And what essentially it does, it shrinks down the projected screen to about this big, gives you the ability to put it in one of the four different quadrants of the screen. It's a nice mode to have. However, I would have liked if they gave you some control over the side of that shrunk down screen. I found it too small and uh, I would have liked if I could make it a bit bigger before putting it in one of the four corners. Now, I, I said the beam was initially created to give you those additional options and control with your glasses, but it was later updated to allow you to use it as a media station. And I think because uh, the competitors are doing that, so uh, with the Rokid, you have the Rokid station, which is a portable Android TV. And even with the Vitures, they have that neck band, which also gives you portable Android TV. And I think that's why they later updated this to allow you to easily install Android applications. It also comes with Netflix and Prime Video uh, already loaded onto this. And here's where my experience with the beam as a media station was a big disappointment. I think because it was never intended to be a media station, uh, it was never designed with that in mind, it probably lacks the computing power to give you a decent experience. What I mean, for example, Netflix preloaded here, the quality is terrible. I think it's 480p or even 360p, and it looks really bad to the point where it's not enjoyable to watch anything on the Netflix app that's already preloaded here, um, which is a big disappointment. Now, I like that I can download content uh, to watch it offline, for example, if I'm in a plane, but the fact that the quality takes a big hit was um, a deal breaker for me. Another really annoying thing is the ports on this or lack of. So uh, as you can see on the bottom, you have two ports, USB-C ports. The first one is to connect the glasses to the beam and you can leave it at that, watch content from the beam itself, but also it comes with some built-in storage. I think it's about 32 GB. So you can also download some movies and put them on the beam and watch them offline. And then uh, the second port, you use it to charge the beam. So far, so good, except since the quality takes a hit while watching off of the beam, you might be inclined to watch off of your phone and connect your phone to the beam. So you get better quality, but you also get the smooth follow or the body anchor modes. Now I did notice that the quality still gets a hit. So the quality is actually better if I connect my phone directly to the glasses uh, versus connecting the phone to the beam to the glasses. But it's not as bad as it is if you're watching content directly from the apps on the beam. But what happens if you have your glasses connected here, and your phone connected over here, there's no more ports to charge this thing. And with a battery life that lasts about three, three and a half hours, that's not nearly enough to get me through most of my flights. And I really don't know why they wouldn't just put an extra input port just to charge this thing independent of those two ports. Now you might be able to buy an extra adapter like the Vitra adapter, which would allow you to both charge and use it at the same time. But I don't want to do that. Why do you not have a port to charge this while using it? So that as well makes it kind of a deal breaker for me to have this thing. In addition to the fact that the OS is not the most user friendly, it's a bit clunky. Another thing, for example, if you want to open any of the apps on this, you need to disable depth control and disabling depth control, you lose the ability to shrink the screen sizes all the way down to 28 inches or all the way up to 300 plus inches. Again, I don't know why you have to disable depth control, but all of these pitfalls make my experience with the Beam, well, not too great. So here are my thoughts on the Beam. Um, I do like the mode that this allows me to have, specifically the smooth follow. I also like the ability to shrink down the size of the screen. So for example, I was uh, doing some things around the house. I wore my glasses and I shrunk down the size of the screen to 28 inches. And this allowed me to watch in one of the corners my content, but also carry on with other activities. So that's nice to have. Smooth follow, as I said, I tested in a plane and I think it's really nice to have. However, 
there's way too many things that I don't like about the Beam for me to justify paying $120 to get the smooth follow and the ability to shrink the screen, let alone having to connect and carry another device and having wires connected left and right. It would have been awesome if the glasses themselves had the ability to give me those modes without the need to buy something else, to carry something else, and to worry about something else. Unfortunately, they don't. So as it stands, while I did enjoy what this gave me, I don't think I would pay $120 to get this. Um, I think there's some potential, but it's not quite there. It feels like an unfinished product that's not ready for its prime time. If you have the beam, let me know what you thought. And as always, if you like the video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel as this encourages me to continue producing content. Until next time, cheers. Thank you.